The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, police on Grand Bahama kept busy this weekend, investigating two homicides in two separate locations. The latest occurring early this morning off Adventurer's Way in the area commonly known as the ghetto. Police tell us that the victim, a 22-year-old Grand Bahama man, was shot multiple times about the upper body. The unidentified man was wearing a teal color t-shirt and black pants at the time of the shooting. Police have three suspects in connection with this homicide and are asking anyone with any information that could help the ongoing investigation to contact them at 350-3107 or 8911 or 919. Now, early Sunday morning, officers were called to the scene of another fatal shooting, this time in the 8 Mile Rock community. The victim in this case, a 15-year-old girl. This incident prompting police to take a more proactive approach when dealing with the issue of minors and nightclubs. Sabrina Brown has this story. Police were called to a bar in the King's subdivision in 8 Mile Rock shortly after 3 o'clock Sunday morning, where they met the lifeless body of a 15-year-old female lying on the outside of the establishment with gunshot wounds to the head. That is our third uh, murder here in Grand Bahama um, for the year. Um, um, fortunately, we have the suspect in custody who we um, have a reason to believe is responsible for this and we intend to um, bring this uh, matter to a closure in the um, shortest possible time. Officer in charge of the Northern Division, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Emmerich Seymour, says he's disturbed that a minor could be allowed at such an establishment. That really is of grave concern to me because in recent times we've been saying to the licensed premises here in Grand Bahama and Northern Bahamas, you know, all of your license, you have parameters in which to operate. You cannot harbor underage, um, teenage, underage adults on your premises for no reason and particularly three, four o'clock in the morning. And so that is a that is a um, that is part of an investigation that we, we, we will uh, definitely explore. And ACP Seymour is sending a stern warning to businesses with liquor licenses. Please, we ask you, we know you're in the business of making money. We ask you not to do that to the detriment of the Bahamian people. Underage um, persons should not be harbored, should not be congregating, should not be sold. Um, liquor on liquor license premises and so we ask you to please adhere to the rules and regulation where we find there are those serious breaches we're moving in and we're moving in resolutely to have these places closed down and closed down as far as the police department is concerned indefinitely. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. A Grand Bahama man hauled before the court in New Providence today in connection with that massive marijuana field found in East Grand Bahama last week. Anton Thomas, 22, appeared before Magistrate Andrew Forbes, and he was charged with possession of dangerous drugs with the intent to supply and conspiracy to cultivate dangerous drugs. He pleaded not guilty and was remanded to Her Majesty's prison until June 9th for trial. Police say officers made the discovery following aerial patrols in the area last week. The marijuana field included some 167,000 marijuana plants with an estimated street value of $16.8 million. And a Dominican woman charged in court today with overstaying her time here in the Bahamas. Immigration officials say the woman arrived in the Bahamas in February for a period of 10 days and then ex her time expired, but she did not seek an extension. In court today before Magistrate Debbie Ferguson, the Dominican woman pleaded guilty. She was convicted and fined $3,000 or two years in prison. Now she was able to pay the fine and was taken to New Providence to be deported to the Dominican Republic. The Bahamas Association of Social Workers staging a one-day forum on Grand Bahama. The Minister for Grand Bahama tackling some t critical youth-related issues during the opening ceremony at the Ruby Swiss restaurant. Here's Joan Davis Rule. The Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Dowell, stated that the role social workers in this country continues to play is vital. He says that our young people are in trouble and he's challenging social workers to renew their commitment to making a difference in the lives of our nation's youth. Prevention is better than cure. That is why I believe as social workers, you have the training and the expertise to see trouble down the road and devise plans 
and implement policies to prevent young people from actually going the wrong way. I can safely say that all of my cabinet colleagues, including the Minister of Social Services, we share the same view. And as a result, we have identified a social deterrence for the youth in our community to prevent crime and violence, which includes issues and programs to alleviate poverty, unemployment, and to look at the underemployment and the lack of parental guidance, education, and access to life-changing opportunities. Minister Darwell notes that despite the greatest efforts of the government and social partners, there are some telltale signs that some youngsters continue to slip through the cracks. Crime, he says, is a major concern, and the lack of conflict resolution skills is a major culprit. It is my understanding that the theme of your workshop today is children in trouble with the law. It is indeed timely, as the incidence of teenagers involved in or who are victims of criminal activity continue to be a concern for this government. In fact, you only need to read the local newspapers. Go online and just look at the various social media sites and you can see vivid images of our young people involved in illegal and immoral behavior. Just this morning in the Freeport News, I read of a 15-year-old female shot dead outside of a nightclub in Eight Mile Rock, leaving many unanswered questions. Why was she there? Why was she there at the time she was there? And the list goes on and on. I believe that this is because we live in a society where young people seemingly do not know how to challenge their angers, their fears, their frustrations, while others give in to peer pressure and do what is morally incorrect. The cabinet minister singled out the fact that there's a local agency which leads the way in giving our young people a second chance. The Urban Renewal 2.0 program is assisting in tackling criminal elements and mentoring young people through various programs, many which are led by our uniform branch. All of our urban renewal centers here on the island of Grand Bahama are fully functional and in conjunction with my ministry, the Ministry of Works and Urban Development, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Defense Force, the Department of Social Services, our religious communities, and private citizens, the Urban Renewal Program is providing much needed relief. Joan Davis Roll, Sedanas Network News. Stay with us, the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues right after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A corporate giant helping to make the future bright for hundreds of youngsters. Executives of the company providing support to the Urban Renewal Program at a time when there has been an increase in demand for dis assistance at schools throughout the Grand Bahama District. Joan Davis Roll has that story. It is an initiative which continues to get hundreds of students on Grand Bahama off to a good start every day. Urban Renewal's breakfast program getting a major boost Monday as the Grand Bahama Power Company made a substantial contribution. Grand Bahama Power Company Executive Kevin Seymour making the presentation during a press conference in the office of the Deputy Director of Urban Renewal, Michelle Reckley. We at the uh, Grand Bahama Power Company uh, were extremely pleased to be able to partner with the uh, Urban Renewal teams, headed by Mrs. Reckley, to uh, participate in this uh, lunch, this breakfast program, which I understand is doing some very good work in all of our communities around Grand Bahama. Uh, of course, everyone has heard about the uh, Urban Renewal and all the good work that they're doing. And so when the uh, opportunity arose to, for us to help and support it, mm -hmm. uh, we, of course, were very pleased to be able to do something. Uh, so on behalf of the Grand Bahama Power Company, its management and staff, uh, we're pleased to uh, make this donation to Mrs. Reckley and her team, and we're sure that it'll be put to good use. Reckley, in accepting the donation, says she's grateful for the kind gesture. She noted that it will go a long way in helping this island's youth. I would like to say a hearty thank you so much, because this is going to go a very, very long way. You know, in Eight Mile Rock, we began our breakfast program at the Martin Town Primary School, where we thought it might have been 20 or 30 children. But today the principal can attest 
that we are feeding over 100 children. And you know that is not easy. And Absolutely. that is why we welcome the private partnership that goes a very, very long way. Because I say over and over, the government alone cannot do it. Absolutely. And when one step forward, it means that you're living exactly how God commands us to live. Absolutely. It's saying that says, whatever you do to the least mm -hmm. of my brothers, that you do unto me. Reckley is appealing to other corporate entities to join hands in making the lives of our youth that much easier and Urban's efforts a success. It's amazing and you know for a child to go to school hungry in the morning how can they concentrate <laughs> and we sit every time exam comes around and we talk about the D average and while this may seem small it plays a part because if I'm in the classroom hungry, I'm not focusing and I'm not concentrating. So we saw it as a way to, to go in and to let these children know that somebody cares. And they're not going because they want to go hungry. They're going because there's just nothing for them to eat. And, you know, if you see the lines when we're there, it's amazing. And the teachers are very, very grateful. So they encourage us to do more and more and more. John Davis Roll, Southern S Network News. The news Cub Scout members are officially inducted on Friday morning at a local institution. Some nine students at St. Paul's Methodist College receiving their official scarves and instructions during an adventure ceremony in the school's auditorium. School program coordinator Susan Russell says his fourth Grand Bahama Cub Scout group is excited about the opportunities the organization provides. The ceremony is so important because it begins the trend where the boys will now be able to receive badges and medals because they would want their sleeves to be all decorated with all the merit badges for all the wonderful things that they have been doing in this organization. The organization has brought men from top to bottom and they are great men in society now so all over the Bahamas actually and we have a number of them here in Freeport so it's a great one and we encourage boys and parents actually to get boys out to come in and join the organization it's, it's a great one what's the ages the ages are starting from six uh, six uh, up to 19 and they still can continue after 19 as a matter of fact as, as leaders Scouts District Commissioner on Grand Bahama, Reginald Dean, says the, Scout, the Cub Scout Association is excited to welcome this latest group. Dean is appealing to others in the community to make a commitment to help mold the lives of our young boys. The mission is something that I have to do simply because we are losing boys by the hour or even so by the minute. And I encourage boys to come and deal with what it is for society down the road. You can help somebody else. There can be other boys who can be saved by those boys that we helped. Somebody helped us. Somebody saved us. And I have an uncle and I saw uh, JC Sweeting and he was around, my dad and other people who made sure that I was in dock. And it wasn't for the beating, you know. It's for the sake of knowing what it is. So life is very short and we encourage boys, especially parents to see that boys come out to some organization to save themselves from trouble. In other news, the Ministry of Tourism touring schools on Grand Bahama to talk about the importance of positive postings on the World Wide Web. Public relations trainee Brooke Sherman says student, students should know that what they post can impact their country. Well, when we look at the information that our visitors get, we look at um, information whereas it comes through the radio, the television, and of course the internet. But we all know that this is the technology era, so everyone has a cell phone, everyone has a tablet, everyone's always online. So we're constantly posting stuff, tweeting, we're putting up videos, pictures, and so we're just asking the students to be mindful of the things that they post, especially because they are connected to our country, they're our ambassadors. So everything that they do reflects the people of our country, so we want them to be responsible. Principal Yvonne Ward believes the students got the message. I think it's a very timely initiative. Um, over the years, we've had some problems with students who have actually posted negative stuff on the internet, and they've regretted it. And so this is a very good message. This is something that we've been telling them over the years. I think they're now beginning to realize 
how very, very dangerous it can be and how detrimental it can be to their future. And that's Look at Stories, making news at the hour. Stay with us, Ricardo Liborn joins us next for a check on sports. Everybody, welcome to Sports. I'm Ricardo Lightborn. Yes, Zeta's Healthy Lifestyle Month came to a close a few hours ago. Yes, some of us here at ZNS Northern Service are trying to get uh, in shape and we also change our eating habits. Then some of us again love food too, too much. Well, Megan Shepherd has got this one for our colleagues who likes to eat. Head coach of Functional Fitness Bahamas, Ricardo Munning, says he has studied the Israeli fighting system for a number of years. But it was about four years ago when he realized his stamina and endurance were not at its peak levels. And that is when the CrossFit-oriented training began. Munnings explains why this style of fitness is more heart healthy and provides more benefits than traditional bodybuilding. We focus mainly on uh, conditioning, um, strength, um, cardio and, and, and endurance. For me, the conditioning side of it, the, uh, the uh, strength training, the uh, stamina and the cardio side of it was a lot more important to your overall daily uh, lifestyle. Okay, um, So what we focus on here at Functional Fitness is movements that you would sort of incorporate in your daily life. You know, whether it be pushing a cart, whether it be walking stairs, you know, that's what we focus on. Another aspect that separates a functional fitness from other groups is the food philosophy. Munning says food is necessary to fuel the body, but it's all about the quality. We don't believe in diets. <laughs> I don't like that word diets. We don't use the word diet. If you look at the first three letters of the word, it says die, you know, so that's sort of how I adopted my whole, my whole outlook on nutrition. We believe in eating whole foods, real foods. Um, we try to avoid as much processed or box foods as we can. We encourage all of our members to eat often. That's one thing that sort of makes us unique in that we don't, we don't put you on these crash diets. We just don't believe in it. Now the group is also hosting a special boot camp designed to introduce new persons to the CrossFit lifestyle. It's more or less sort of like a jump start uh, for people to um, to get their fitness routine in order, to get their nutrition um, lifestyle uh, in order as well. And we just help you along, along that path for the six weeks. I don't follow the CrossFit philosophy completely, okay, just because there are some aspects of it that, I, that we don't really agree with. Um, but we sort of mix it up with different things. My certification is in combat fitness, okay, that's what I'm certified in. Um, and it's very similar to CrossFit, so I sort of adopted both aspects of it, of, of those two type of, of training. Money says not to be afraid by that description. All workouts are customized to your fitness level. Megan Shepard, ZNS, Total Sport. <laughs> well, folks, the police staff association opened its basketball tournament in honor of Ernie Barr on Saturday, played at the YMCA. The GB Port Authority regulators over the customs collectors 27 and 19. The RAND first responders, they roughed up Central 35-19, and also the crime family, they put it to uh, Firebrands 31-14. to Now, the Grandma Basketball Association going to start its playoffs tonight. St. George's Gym, Men of Honor, taking on the Arawak Stars. 7 o'clock tip-off for you. Grand Bomber Shipyard Cruises and uh, Saturday Ballers will play the feature. It is a three-game series. Now, over in Bimini is the start of the basketball championship over there. The Poggy Bay Tigers will take on the Landscapers. That's the consolation game at set at 7. And the championship game will put Bimini Sand Braves and the Resort World Marlins and the series for both of those is best of five. Now let's go to some baseball as the Legacy League are 9-10 the scoreboard. Harbor launches defeated the Paradox Rookies Rockies 6-4. The Grandma Little League lines are over the Polymers Dodgers 11-2 and the Rhodes and Arterial Jan Arterial Red Sox, they defeated the GB Little League Buccaneers 6-5 and uh, also 11-12 division and Tante Russell got to win. The loss goes to Kevin Smith, so the kids playing some baseball as well. Now, soccer is being played in the high school level in the Arthur Paris Mary Nab League and here's what happens. The Canada National Junior Boys defeating Catholic High 8-0. BME has down Igmar Rock 5-1. Uh, the Canada National Senior Boys, they back Catholic High 9-0 and Bishop Michael Eldon closed out Igmar Rock 5-zip. St. George's 
with a two nothing win over Tabernacle, Sunland five over Jack Hayward, Sism over Tristan Russell, closing out St. George's three nothing as well. Lukai and the Nash are playing great soccer. They put a five nothing blind job on St. Paul's and St. George's uh, and Catholic High. Their senior girls played to a scoreless draw. The MAS Wars held of Jack Hayward one nothing. Sunland over Igmar Rock three nil. And Tabernacle Junior Boys over Luganda International, they play to a scoreless draw as well. And the Sunland Senior Boys down Catholic High, 3 0. Jack Hayward over Igmar Rock, 1 0. Luganda International and Tabernacle, 2 1 to score. And uh, Bishop Michael Alden over St. Paul's, 8 0. So the guys play some soccer, the girls do as well, and everybody's having some fun. And if you want to know who eats a lot and is CrossFit, she's looking at me. I got to go. That's what. <laughs>